more often than not, I think as a creative director, we are a sort of uh, jack of all traits, but an ace of none maybe. A lot of the time us creative directors are working with artists who have a very unique creative aesthetic. So what I end up doing a lot of the time is, is almost creative managing while hiring out a team that can get the right type of photography and a team that can get the right type of assets and video and all this stuff. So it's not necessarily me on the ground uh, doing most of the heavy lifting, the photography or shooting the video or doing the design work. A lot of the time that's just kind of, uh, I find people who work better in those aesthetics than I do. But once in a while, you will work with an artist where their aesthetic and their creative vision sort of perfectly aligns with yours. So that brings us to Kaleo. And we're down, we go. Now, anybody who knows about this band already knows that, th that while the music is very unique, Kaleo is very much a rock band. And Kaleo should very much be treated like a rock band. The music's a little bluesy, it's a little Americana-y at times, but they definitely have this very kind of brash, loud sound that definitely lives kind of in this alternative rock music world. And that is an aesthetic, my friends, that I feel like I do very, very well. So when the discussion of branding and setting up visuals for their fight or flight world tour, uh, this was something that I really felt like I could really play a very hands-on role with and those are the most fun ones If I remember correctly, this was gonna be Kaleo's first tour since like 2018 or 19 I know they had tried to go back out in 2020 pandemic hit the rest is history So we definitely wanted to focus very heavily on the marketing of the tour So like I said not a whole lot of time to capture a lot of this stuff We needed press photos and we needed video component and one thing that uh, we did that I don't think a lot of artists are doing this I know some are but we can talk more about this also, but uh, tour trailers. So we saw a really good bump in ticket sales and a really good spike in fan engagement just based off of the trailer alone. So they were doing a full rehearsal in Nashville and I had access to them for about six or seven hours. I could kind of just go in there, I could shoot any of the content that I wanted Given that the constraints are you are going to be kind of up against lighting that's kind of constantly changing because it's going to be like actual stage lighting. Um, the band was still kind of figuring out blocking and where they're going to stand and what's kind of happening on stage. So it wasn't perfect. It was a little bit chaotic, but those were kind of the elements that I wanted to lean into since we're kind of going with this gritty off the cuff rock and roll aesthetic. So I got to the rehearsal space. Um, I was shot everything on my trusty Canon R6, which is the same camera that I'm filming this with actually. Shot video, shot photos. Again, I think a tour trailer is something all artists ought to be doing when promoting a tour. The idea for this was to make it feel like we're actually at a live show with all of these elements the fans are going to see on this new tour, right? So we didn't want to recycle old footage and kind of have fans engaging with this old content that we've already pushed out there, right? I wanted to feel very reminiscent of kind of old film photography, kind of this uh, Mick Rock aesthetic to where it maybe it's a little bit slower shutter speeds and things get a little streaky. So again, leaning back into this idea that it's okay for the photos and the video to have slight imperfections. I didn't use autofocus on the lenses. I felt like if things are out of focus, that kind of led to some of the mystique and some of the stuff that I like about this aesthetic. Now, I didn't want things obviously blatantly out of focus, but if there was a few times in the set when maybe everything wasn't quite as sharp, I felt like that's okay. We all kind of really liked black and white, although I felt like doing black and white for the tour trailer uh, might not be a great choice only because I really wanted to feel the vibrance of being at a concert. I wanted to feel the lights. I wanted to feel the different color temperatures. And then we kind of worked a little bit on the uh, tour ad mats here. Again, trying to make sure everything was very, very on brand and that, you know, tour trailer, tour content, photos, um, ad mat, everything feels very, very aligned. And, and like there's definitely a very solid creative through line with each of these assets. All right, guys, so that's kind of a deep dive into some of the work that I did with Kaleo. I'm gonna be doing another video on them shortly. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Drop a uh, comment down here. Please like and subscribe. And uh, again, I'm listening. So tell me what you guys like about this. Tell me what works, what doesn't. And I will catch you guys on the next one. See you later.